into it? Hey, I would love to tell you about uh, my week in the Bahamas, but uh, in order to hear about it, you got to be here Wednesday night, okay? All right, so we see you Wednesday night. This morning, we're in our series called God, and today I want to talk about God is faithful. God is faithful, faithful, and it's so interesting. You're going to see, I don't talk about what I'm speaking on to my wife or to my daughter, and the reason I don't do that is because they'll steal my sermon and preach it before I get there. So I just don't tell them, but this morning, they have set this thing up beautifully. So I'm looking forward to uh, the unity that's going to come out of this. 1 Corinthians 1.9 says this, God is faithful. God is faithful through whom you were called in the fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, what does it mean that God is faithful? Because it does not say that God is faithful to someone or God is faithful about someone. It says that God is faithful. It's a description of God. It's stated as a fact. God is faithful. It is a definition of him. It's a characteristic of him. He can be described as faithful. So now I have to go back and look at that word faithful and say, what is it? What is this description telling me about God? So I go back to that word faith in the Greek. Uh, Faith in the Greek is pistos, and it means a conviction of truth, a conviction of truth and full faith full means full of so in other words it can be restated as god is full of truth he's full of truth he is truth full scripture tells us that he cannot even lie he doesn't have the capacity to lie in titus 1 2 in the hope of eternal life which god who cannot lie promised long ago hebrews 16 uh, 6 18 says it's impossible for god to lie numbers 23 1 uh, 9 says god is not a man that he should lie so it is not within god's characteristic to be able to lie. If I were to say it in humans terms, God in his DNA does not have a chromosome for not telling the truth. He doesn't have that aspect about him. He can be defined as one who never lies because he cannot lie. And that is a powerful, wonderful thing for you and I. Why? Why would that be a big deal for you and I? Because it says, if God answers your question, he will tell you the truth. If God writes it down for us to read, it will be the truth. It cannot be a lie. Whatever he speaks is truth. Oh, that's big. I'm telling you, whatever comes from God cannot include a falsehood. It must be truth because he's incapable of a lie. Well, that means you can trust in what he says as being truth. Therefore, when God speaks, God is faithful. What he says is a faithful statement. But here's the truth. Aren't you and I? called to be faithful. We are called to be full of truth. Uh, That's kind of a scary statement when you consider that God cannot lie and we're called to be full of truth. So how can I do that? How can I be full of truth? I'm going to propose to begin with that in order for us to have faithfulness, we need to build our faithfulness on the source of faithfulness. In other words, if I go to the best faithful well, that would be God, and I draw from that well to build on my faithfulness. It looks like this, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, through truth. And that not of yourself, it's a gift of God, and not as the results of work so that anyone may boast. And some people argue that the gift that he's talking about here is salvation. That the gift is salvation. But in order to have salvation, I have to have faith. And if that faith is not a gift of God, then I'm saying that faith comes from me. And therefore, I can grab a hold of grace. So all of a sudden, my salvation comes from my faith. So the gift has to be the faith that God gives in order to accept the grace that he offers. It is the gift of faith that he gives us. It's, it's defined this way in Romans 12, 3. 
For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, you ought not think highly of yourself than you ought think, but to think as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. I don't know if you just saw it, but there was a measure of faith that God allotted to you. God gives faith. He gives you faith. God gives you the capacity to have faith. And because he's given me the capacity to have faith, I can accept the grace that he's extended for my salvation. Are you with me? Stay with me. Stay with me. So where does that faith come from? It comes from God. It's expressed this way in Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing By the word of Christ. I have heard this misapplied so many times. And I want to clarify it for you today. The scripture does not say faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. The scripture says that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. What is coming from the word of Christ? The ability to hear. The ability to hear spiritually so that I could put my faith in something. Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of Christ. In other words, I get my spiritual capacity and capability to hear from the word which allows my faith to be activated. Are you with me? The faith that he gave me is activated by the fact that his word releases my hearing so that I could put faith and therefore have salvation. So the capacity to spiritually hear comes from God. And you're saying, man, you are splitting hairs. I'm not. Here's why. How many people do you know that have heard the word of God and don't have faith? So it can't be just hearing the word of God in a physical earring sense that brings about faith. There has to be some other level of hearing that has to be opened up to us. And the scripture says that faith comes as a result of being able to hear spiritually. The actual ability to hear that leads to faith comes from the word of God. So God gives me the capacity to hear and have faith so that his truth can enter into me through the spiritual ear. Stay with me. So you're thinking, man, that's kind of complicated because I always thought that I just believed and there you go, I got saved. But listen, you could not believe without God opening your spiritual ears. Let me show you. It's in Scripture. It's laid out perfectly for us to understand. It's in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. I'm going to start in verse 13. Therefore, I speak to them in parables. Jesus has just told a parable about shedding seeds across a bunch of different kinds of grounds. And the people didn't get it. And the disciples, they didn't get it either. And so they came to Jesus and they said, what is this about throwing seed on the ground? Therefore, I speak to them in parables because while seeing, they don't see. And while hearing, they don't hear. Nor do they understand. They had heard it with their ears, but they didn't understand it. Faith didn't come by hearing because they heard it, but they didn't understand. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being filled, which says, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. Hearing the word with our ears doesn't bring understanding. You will keep on seeing, but you will not perceive for the heart of this people has become dull and their ears, they scarcely hear and they have closed their eyes. Other words, they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, if their ears were spiritually open and understanding with their heart and they would return and I would heal them. Listen, it said, if they could hear spiritually, they would be healed. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. He wasn't saying everybody he was talking to was blind and deaf. He was saying certain ones can hear what I'm saying. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and didn't see it and to hear what you hear and didn't hear it. Now verse 18. Hear then. (laughs) Jesus is speaking. Jesus is the word. 
in the beginning was the Jesus is the word and he says, hear then the parable of the sower. If anyone hears the word, not talking physically, hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the eagle one comes and snatches it away, what has been sown in his heart. This is the one whom the seed was thrown beside the road. So to remind you, they heard it, but they did not come to faith. So faith doesn't come by just hearing it. 20. The one whom the seed was sown on the rocky places, this is the man who hears the word, immediately receives it with joy, and yet has no firm root in himself, but it's temporary. And when affliction and persecution arises because of the word, immediately falls away. He heard, but he didn't understand, so there was no ability to walk in truth. 22. And the one whom the seed was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, and the worry of the world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. He too heard it, but he didn't understand it spiritually, so he has no faith to continue. Now look at 23. Now the one whom was seed on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it. How did he understand it? He understood it spiritually. He had heard it and his ears had been opened to understand spiritually. He indeed bears fruit and brings forth some hundredfold, 60 and some 30. So connect the dots. Jesus is speaking. Jesus is the word. And they are understanding things with spiritual healing. He gives them the ability to spiritually hear. They are hearing truth in their spirit. Therefore, they have faith. You've actually seen this before in Scripture. Jesus was talking to his disciples one time who didn't understand that he had to be crucified, who didn't understand that he had to be resurrected. And it says in Luke 24, 45, Jesus is talking, and it says, Then he opened their minds to understand the Scripture. They had read it. They had heard it. But their mind was not open yet. Spiritually, it couldn't be received in. So they didn't know. They were just hearing words. The word of Christ gave them the opportunity to have faith in this truth. And when you have hearing, spiritual hearing, you can understand. Spiritual hearing comes from God. The ability to comprehend it spiritually. Remember in Corinthians when he says, they'll think it's foolishness. Why? Because it has not been spiritually appraised. And if they had spiritually appraised, they would have understood. Listen, everything that comes into existence, including faith, comes into existence at the word of God. There were like eight people right in this section. (laughs) I need you to hear me out. Everything that comes into existence comes into existence based on the word of God. Go back to the book of Genesis. God speaks and he says, let there be light. And there was God speaks and he said, let the earth sprout vegetation and the earth brought forth God speaks and he says, let there be lights in the sky. And there were God speaks and says, let the waters team with fish and the sky with birds. And guess what they did? Why? Because the spirit of God was hovering and God spoke and these things came into being. So everything that is created is created on the word of God. If you're hearing me, nothing comes into being without God speaking it, including your faith. Oh, you know this. You know this. You know what it's like when you know God spoke to you. What happens inside of you? You have a confidence and a boldness and a surety. Why? Because he spoke and he created something in you. You can now have faith in that truth. You can move forward in that truth. Why? Because God spoke it. Listen, in the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 11, there's a thing called the hall of faith. 
Not the hall of fame, the hall of faith. We're talking about the great leaders of faith in our history. And I want you to hear the words out of 11 uh, in this hall of faith and consider what's actually being said. By faith, Noah, being warned of God about things he had not yet seen, in reverence, he prepared an ark. Why did Noah prepare it? Because he was spoken to and warned by God that it was coming. Therefore, he had the faith to build the ark. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and left the land of Ur and came to Israel. Why did he come? Because God spoke and he obeyed because there was a faith put in him by the word of God. Verse 11, by faith, Sarah herself received the ability to conceive beyond the proper time of life since she considered him faithful who had promised God had spoken and promised a child would come. Sarah had faith because the child had been spoken. By faith, Abraham, in verse 17, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was offering his only begotten son. God had promised him that he would have a descendancy. Promised him that they would number like the stars in the sky. So he knew he could move forward because God had given him a word and so his faith was put into action. If you continue to read, Moses split the sea when God told him, raise up your staff and split the sea. Joshua led the first conquest against Canaan when the angel of the Lord met him the night before and said, I want you to walk around it seven times. When the word was spoken, walk around it seven times. What did Joshua do? Say, you're crazy. He went to his own people who had been waiting for 40 years in the desert. And he said to them, we're going to walk around that city for seven days. That's some kind of faith when you got people have been in 40 years to go into this land for him to now say, no, we're just going to walk around and blow trumpets. Yeah, it'll, it'll all work out. Trust me. He had faith. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, David, Samuel. The scripture says, who by faith and all of these having gained approval through their faith did not receive what was promised. They believed in it. They knew it was coming because it had been stated by God. I don't know if you're seeing, but the word of God is preceding the faith in action. They were able to have faith because the word of God was released. They heard it spiritually, and so they moved forward. Three different ways God speaks to us today. Three clear ways. One, through Scripture. It's called the Logos Word of God. Anything that's already been stated, already been said, anything that's already been recorded, that's the Logos Word of God. If you look at number two, the Rhema Word of God. The rhema word of God. Jesus is in the desert being tempted by the devil. He comes out. The devil says, you're hungry. Why don't you turn these rocks into bread? Jesus says, man doesn't live by bread alone. He lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Not every word that proceeded, not every word that had been written, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God is how I live, how I move forward. Jesus himself defined in Revelation as the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and all things were created through him. The point is that the source of the word, the source of that word that's going to come out to you, the source of that thing that will build your faith is a truth filled God. He cannot lie. You don't ever have to doubt what he says because he doesn't have the capacity not to tell you the truth. So if he says it, it will happen. Listen, in 2002, I was told through a scripture in my living room that I would leave the world of manufacturing and I would enter the kingdom of God. And just like that, it happened. And I was able to walk away from a six-figure job one day, just resigned, said, God's calling me into the kingdom. I got to quit. My boss said, are you crazy? I said, absolutely. But I had faith. I knew he had said it, and I knew I was going to be doing it. In 2013, I was told by the Spirit, you will get to know me fully. And so we stepped out in that with Revived Church. Why? Because there was a word that was time for the Holy Spirit to move and marry the word and the Spirit together and set up an environment where we could encounter God. And so we're here today. Why? Because there was a word that was released. And when that word was released, my faith stepped into action. I love this because oftentimes you're going to find out that God tells you the word in advance, gives you that truth, and then he confirms it along the way. Why is that, Rick? Because we need that confirmation. 
Because we need to lay the fleece out one more time. Because we look at Gideon and we say, well, let's ask God three times, three different ways. And if he tells the same thing three times, three different ways, then we should move forward. And listen, Gideon is a lack of faith. That story is not about faith. It's about God who just patiently said, stop doubting. Mark chapter 4. I want to show you how this works where he releases a truth and then he confirms it. Mark 4. You know this story. Jesus is about to go across the sea to deliver the Gadarene and there's a storm that comes up. And in Mark 4 35 it says, on that day when evening came, he said to them, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him along with him in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with him. And there arose a fierce gale of wind, and the waves were breaking over the boat, so much that the boat was already filling up. Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? And he got up, and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, be still. And the wind died down. And it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no uh, word of truth? Faith. They became very much afraid and said to one another, who is this then that the winds and the wave can obey him? I don't know if you saw it, but he told them before we are going to the other side. Was there any reason for them to doubt that they were going to the other side? The word had been released. Paul has been told, you are going to Rome. He gets on a boat. It crashes up against the rocks. It's going to sink. Do you know what he tells everybody? No problem. We're going to live because I've been told I'm going to Rome. Now, ain't nothing going to get in the way of that. The word's already been released. They have been told they would get to the other side already. And then in the midst of the storm, there was a rhema word. Did you notice that after he spoke to the storm, he said to them, where is your conviction of the truth that I gave you? Where is your faith? Where is your conviction of the truth that we will get to the other side? We will get to the other side. I have spoken it. It is true. That's what the truth was. That's what the faithful God said. How many times do we get a word from God? And if it doesn't happen by 5 p.m., we begin to doubt and question God. How many times have you had a word delivered to you and then you wonder why hasn't it happened? It's been four days. I had words delivered to me when I was 17 that came true last weekend. You want to know what it's like to wait 40 years for a word to come to pass? It comes to pass. Why? Because he spoke it. Uh, We sit back and he says, fear not. And we fear. He says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we get depressed. He says, trust in the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. So we make plans. He says, love one another and we criticize and judge each other. He says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And we say, I'm going through a dry spell with God. Where is he? Can you imagine the way God must roll his eyes when we say, where are you, God? I told you the truth has already been laid out there. Never leave you, never forsake you right here, buddy, right here. See, I think what happens is we suffer from your butt disease. <laughs> Here's how it looks. You're a child of God. Yeah, but where is he? <laughs> By his stripes, you are healed. Yeah, but the doctor said, oh. I am your provision. Yeah, but where's the money for the mortgage this month? Listen to me. Yeah, but is the disease of leaning on your own understanding. Because a truth has already been spoken. And either we're going to walk in that truth or we're going to suffer from yeah, but disease. God gave you a word that you will have a ministry and you're saying, yeah, but when I'm ready and nobody's recognizing me. Listen to me. I'll tell you point blank, straight up in a bold fashion. When he called me, I was not ready. 
He told me what I was going to be doing, and I was not ready. It took three years to even enter into that ministry position because I thought, you told me, let's do it, God. And he said, I told you, but we got some things to go through before you're ready. And if I put you into it now, by the way, you will sink like a ship and you will never get to Rome. Psalms 119.105. This is a truth. Your word is a lamp to my feet and it's a light to my path. Why? Because it's sure. Because it's true. Because it's there. Because it's lit, lit, lit up the direction in front of me and I can walk that path because your word established that light. God speaks actively, not just through scripture. Oftentimes he's talking directly to you. And I expressed this this week in the Bahamas so many times. God has spoken to us and we have sat back and said, oh, that's just me. There are several ways you can determine whether it's God that's speaking to you. I'll tell you how it is for me. The first way is he uses words I don't use. He says, I'll be your refuge. I'm like, refuge? I don't, I don't use that word refuge. The second way, did it come with a condemnation or with a conviction? Because if he said, man, you will never be good enough to be in ministry. That ain't God. This is what God says. Oh, yeah, you're going to be good enough. I've already set it in place. It's coming. You may not feel it right now, but it's going to happen. God is speaking, and we're not even giving him credit for what he's saying. Acts 13, 2. While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said... Now, I need you to get this picture. A group of disciples, they are all hovering in a place, in a room, and they are fasting. And the Holy Spirit says... Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Everybody in the room heard this. We got to set aside these two guys. Let me ask you, what happened to the faith of Barnabas and Saul? Holy Spirit says, we got a work to do. Y'all pray over us. We need to pack our bags. Let's go. No doubts. Ready to roll. Acts 8, 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, go up and join this chariot. Philip and the eunuch. He would not have gone down that road. He would not have gone under that chariot without that word. But once the word was released, he knew it was truth and he had to follow through that his faith was an act. Acts 10, 19. While Peter was reflecting on a vision, the spirit said to him, behold, three men are looking for you, but get up, go downstairs and accompany them without misgiving. I love that. For I have sent them myself. I think he had to tell Peter, Peter, don't give me any grief about this. Uh, Peter, don't, don't pop off at the mouth as you're prone to do. Peter, just without, without questioning me, just get up and go. And Peter got up and went and he leads Cornelius and his family to Christ. Acts 16, 6 through 7. They passed through uh, Phygian and, and Galatia region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak a word in Asia. And after they came to My Mysia, they were trying to get into Bithynia. Listen, you try to pronounce these names. <laughs> and the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. He said, no, stop. We should be living with an expectation that God is speaking and that he is releasing a truth to you for your future, that he wants you to walk in a way. And listen to me. He wants you to do it in faith. He wants you to have the faith to boldly go. That's why he's releasing it with his word. His word is faithful. It is truthful. It will come to pass. John 16, 13. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, listen, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. Set apart for me, Saul and Barnabas, for the work that I have called them to. Go up and join that chariot. He speaks, and because it is truth, it brings out our faith in order to walk in what he calls us to do. God has spoken to activate your faith. His words are all around us, and we should be a people full of faith because he 
he only speaks truth. Why? Because he is faithful. Here's what I'm saying. Religion. Religion will tell you what you cannot do. You cannot engage in that. You cannot speak that way. You cannot go to that place. You cannot drink that amount. You cannot look at her that way. That's religion. But the Holy Spirit and the voice of God tells you what you can do. He tells you you can overcome this, that you have power, that you have strength, that you have integrity, that my word of truth has been released in you. Stand to your feet, please. I'm looking for that group of people who are looking for that word of God today, who are maybe you know that word of God. It's already been released to you and you have doubted it. When I was 17 years old in a dream that I still remember today, I remember the colors. I remember the room. I remember what it looked like. I was standing on a stage in front of what had to be at least 20,000 people and I was speaking. Scared me to death. I thought I was one day going to be a singer and maybe somebody was going to ask me to sing in front of a group of people. But I went to Bogota, Colombia. And he called me up on stage and he said, address these people. And I saw the lighting and I saw the same people. All of that when I was 17 years old was in my dream. Why? Because he's full of truth. And when God speaks, it creates and allows you to have faith in what he has created by his word. He has created a plan. He has created a purpose. He has created a path for you. And he is releasing words to you so that you can have the faith to move forward. I'm just asking you to close your eyes and raise your hands. God, in this moment, I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to move. Move upon your people. For those who are laying fleece, let it be whatever it needs to be for them to get over their doubt. For those who are looking for that confirmation this morning, I pray that you would lay it in their heart right now. And God, for those who are waiting for the word, waiting to move in faith, waiting to be bold, waiting to have courage and strength because they just need a word mighty ruach breath of god i call to the breath i call to the breath and i ask you to bring life to this room i ask you to bring life to this room i speak to the breath and i say fill us with that breath wake us up lord no longer Christians confined by do's and don'ts, but a people led by the Spirit and the voice and the Word of God with strength and dignity and honor and clarity in all of the things we do. We love you, Father, and we thank you for your Word that is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for joining us today. I hope the Word today has been impactful. I hope it's been meaningful. I hope there was something said today that struck you in your spirit, that you can ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation on how you can use that in your life today. We thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to have you join us in the actual services at 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. on Sunday morning at 851 Johnson Avenue in Stewart, Florida. And if you'd like more information about Revive Church, check out our website. It's reviveusnow.com. God bless. Have a great day.